Hi, I'm Harry McDaniel, a sculptor based in Asheville, North Carolina. And this is Crabbing Us. I designed this sculpture to share online as a do-it-yourself project made with simple materials that most people would have around their house. Um, you can download free PDF files from my website to print out uh, these templates on cardstock or other paper. And this video will guide you through the process of cutting them out, matching up the edges, and taping them together. Once you have it assembled, you can paint it, draw on it, or decorate it in whatever way suits you. And hopefully you'll have fun in the process, and in the end, have a sculpture you'll enjoy having around your house. At some point in your life, you may have made a box or other three-dimensional form from a paper pattern like this. Uh, and with this type of pattern, you, you cut around the outside and then fold on the lines. And then when you tape the edges, it actually holds its form. The sculpture patterns are somewhat like that, although a bit more complicated because the edges are curved, so they don't just fold up in the same way. So you have to actually cut each edge, then match them up and tape them. Krabby Mouse is made in three separate sections, and you'll assemble each one separately. This is the B section by itself. The first step is cutting out the patterns, and as you cut, you'll want to Try to be very accurate on the black lines. That will make your job easier as you go along in matching up with the other pieces. When you get to the little circles in the middle of each side, just cut straight through that. That's an alignment dot, so it'll, it'll appear as a semicircle if you cut through it. And that will help you in matching the piece with the piece next to it. In some places on the patterns, you'll see dotted lines that Tiny dotted lines are alignment reference points uh, as, you're as you're assembling the sculpture later. There are larger dotted lines that are fold lines, and that will be indicated on the pattern. Once you have your pieces cut out, you can begin the assembly process. Um, and you will match up the letters and numbers. So in this case, I have um, A1 matching up with A1. And this is one of the ones that needs to be folded. I use pieces of tape about half inch by half inch. Put it on one side and then match it up, match up that little dot. It's always best to start from the middle where you can see that alignment dot because sometimes the edges will throw you off a little bit. Once you get the first piece of tape down, it's pretty easy to just start working your way toward one end. I'll, I'll typically put the tape on one side and then kind of man manipulate the paper around to get the edges just perfectly lined up and then bend down the other piece and press from the back. Um, and this is a pretty straight edge. I actually can get away with using a slightly larger piece of tape than I can on the more curved edges. And these little triangles are, are kind of tricky to, to tape. Um, but I, I'll wrap one piece of paper around that edge. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put it on the small piece first and match the little dot and bend the tape over and it's uh, already just with, with two surfaces taped together it wants to start going into the correct form and a lot of times with the, with the small pointy corners, I'll put on a piece of tape that I know will wrap around and cover three sides. And that, that helps strengthen those little corners to get the tape kind of wrapped all the way around them. Generally, the, the order of the numbers will be the easiest way to assemble these pieces, although some sides it doesn't matter that much. In areas of the sculpture where the, the sides are still pretty loose, as you tape it, you can, um, you can squeeze it flat to really get the tape well bound and it won't do any harm. In areas that are already taking form or like this, if you try to squeeze it, you'll end up creasing the cardstock and that crease will still show when it's completed. As I'm taping, one thing that I do quite a bit is uh, attach the tape on one side, press it, and then I can 
I can gently slide the the other edge toward the tape and use use my finger to kind of stop its movement right where I want it and fasten down that tape. You'll probably spend an hour or so taping all the edges and uh, work can be a little tedious but as as you get farther along it, it's kind of exciting to uh, see how the pieces begin to take form and become a a sculpture rather than just flat pieces of paper. Once you have your sections assembled, uh, leaving one side open on section A and section C, then you can um, match up the little smiley faces and and uh, fit the sections together. And by leaving this open, I've got a place to press down and make sure the glue joint is good. I'm using uh, some all-purpose clear glue. This is essentially the same as Elmer's glue, white glue or school glue. Um, I'll spread a bit of that around and press these together and then put on a little, first, first of all, I'll kind of spread the glue a bit. Um, I'll press these together and then put a little tape on it to hold it while the glue dries. And this is where the, the little small dotted lines can help you line the piece up. So I'm going to use one piece of tape right there. And inside joints are hard to get tape into. It wants to kind of spring out. Um, I'll get one piece of tape on the other side and then just let this sit for a while. Alright, so that, that's a pretty nice fit. Um, they're not going to be perfect. This is, this is the part of the process that's probably going to be least accurate according to the lines. Just There's a little irregularity in the way that the edges come together, um, but that's close enough. Once you have your sculpture fully assembled, there are a lot of options as far as uh, decorating the surface. Um, if you want to paint it or apply collage or, or anything that might uh, be a wet process, it's a good idea to seal the surface in some way first so that the water doesn't soak into the cardboard or, or cardstock and make it soggy and start to lose, lose its form. Um, so you could use a clear spray sealer, you could use spray paint primer. Um, another option would be to take packing tape and run it across, just, just cover the whole surface with packing tape. If you did that, you'd want to trim it at the edges rather than wrapping it around because it'll bunch up if you try to wrap it around. Um, one option that my wife tried, which is actually a fairly simple uh, process that gives a good result, is prior to assembling the sculpture, she drew on the pattern with felt tip markers and um, made a variety of colors and patterns on it and then assembled it. And since the tape is clear, it lets, the, lets her drawing show through that. So that's a, that's a fun, easy way to do it. Um, if you plan to uh, paint it, you might consider uh, printing the pattern on just standard paper and gluing it to chipboard or uh, thin cardboard such as a cereal box and then, then cutting through the pattern in the cereal box to get a, a stiffer piece of cardboard. Uh, that works really well. I did one piece out of a uh, cereal box. And I if you don't have spray glue to, to attach the template to the, the uh, cardboard, you can also use a glue stick. That works quite well. You can get the cap off. Um, just spread the glue stick. Uh, rub it on a little bit to get it evenly dispersed and it's probably best to rub it down a little bit to really be sure it attaches glue. Glue sticks aren't a real strong adhesive, but it should be strong enough to keep the pattern on there while you cut it out.
Once you've made one Krabby Mouse sculpture, you may have ideas for how you want to decorate the next one. It's free. You can make all you want. You can fill your house with wonderful sculptures. And I hope you'll have fun.